Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Dora. Thank you, Zorana. Uh, I have listened with great interest to your roadmap for prevention and treatment of colorectal cancer uh, in Europe, and I hope that uh, we'll be able to discuss that in more detail in a separate meeting. Uh, I'd like to, on the first slide, uh, say a few words on the, uh, on the Europe Beating Cancer Plan which is a Commission flagship initiative. In other words, it's one of the main initiatives that the Commission has proposed when it took office. Um, and uh, we started work um, basically uh, a year ago and the uh, plan was adopted on the 4th of February of this year. Uh, so exactly one year after the original thing had been launched. There were extensive consultations with all stakeholders. We had over two and a half thousand uh, replies and contributions to our public consultation. And we also had a whole series of separate meetings with individual or groups of, of patients, uh, health professionals, uh, industrial, um, industrial stakeholders like the pharmaceutical companies and so on. <clears throat> And all of these uh, contributions, of course, flowed in and contributed to the, the final result. Um, I wanted to make the point as well, perhaps, that the work which we will be doing on cancer together uh, will not only uh, impact on cancer, but it will also impact on other non-communicable diseases. Uh, it's an important point because, uh, you know, there's a long list of people at our door who would like to see a European plan on diabetes, a European plan on cardiovascular health, and it would be quite impossible to, to follow that approach. The point I'm making is that many of the determinants of cancer uh, also uh, shared with other non-communicable diseases. And if we improve health systems as regards the way that early detection and screening operate, if we improve health systems uh, as regards the uh, development and uh, implementation of pharmaceutical treatments, and if we improve patient care and aftercare, uh, all of these will impact on patients in general and not just on cancer patients. So uh, it will in fact be a driver, I think, for improvements through the system. Uh, we have had, in addition to the uh, broad public consultation, we had uh, consultations with the member states uh, also in the preliminary phase so that they wouldn't be surprised, of course, and that they could help us to develop the plan. And uh, we, we see all this, this as well as being part of a broader um, target of reaching the sustainable development goals. These are international uh, UN targets. And also it will contribute, of course, to the World Health Organization targets on non-communicable diseases. So the whole thing is really wrapped up uh, and the targets which we have established are in line with the international targets. On the next slide, uh, in terms of the content, the plan has four pillars, the first being prevention. And I was happy to hear some references earlier on in the meeting to better nutrition and also, of course, physical activity, weight control, things like that. These are issues which are covered in the prevention part of the plan, together with, for example, initiatives on the cancer code. Cancer code is a sort of a public communication code, which I think could benefit from being more widely known. Uh, but it's very scientifically based and it's really a, an evidence based tool for communication. Uh, the second area of work is, is of interest to you, and you've talked about it already. Uh, we heard the presentation by Iris from her experience in Erasmus University and how to improve uh, early detection. Uh, we have a, um, a cancer screening recommendation which was adop adopted by the Council of Ministers some years ago, and it really needs to be brought up to date for two reasons. It needs to be brought up to date in respect of the cancer screening techniques, uh, which have evolved since the uh, recommendation was adopted. Secondly, it needs to be uh, rolled out in a more systematic way, because we still have huge differences between availability and take up of screening in the different member states. 
And thirdly, um, we have to look and see if there are other cancer sites be besides colorectal cancer, cervical cancer, or breast cancer, which could benefit from uh, a, an agreed uh, EU approach to screening. And finally, of course, there's all the issues around quality control uh, of screening. So the, these are, are the elements we'll be looking at, and we hope that you, we can count on your experience and support as well when, when the time comes to review these screening recommendations. Uh, this, the third part of the plan is in relation to diagnosis and treatment. And here, um, I guess a lot of the work will be focusing on development and rollout and making access to treatment uh, for, for cancer a, a, uh, a reality, because there is this huge gap between the uh, products and treatments which are available and their actual uh, access in, in the member states. This is a huge difference between countries and within countries. And the last part of the plan refers to quality of life for patients and survivors. Now, there are also some general themes, I would say, which are the linkage with research and innovation. You probably know that the uh, research program of the European Union has created what they call a cancer mission, which is chaired by uh, Professor Walter Riccardi, and which has come up with a series of recommendations for cancer research. And the idea is that we would link uh, the outcomes of this research mission with the activities of the cancer plan so that we're not operating separately, but together. And there will be substantial financial resources available for the cancer mission, 10% of the total of health research has been reserved for the cancer mission. Uh, also, we have um, the resources of the Europe for, EU for Health program, which will have a budget over seven years of 5.6 billion euros. And we're also trying to pick things from the cancer plan, which could be financed either by the cancer mission financing, financing or from the uh, EU for Health program. So at the same time as defining the actions to be undertaken, we're also trying to identify the financial instruments which could actually make that happen. Now, as regards the uh, uh, lessons learned from COVID, I'd, li I'd just like to mention that, of course, COVID has had a huge impact, both in terms of availability and access to screening, uh, but also availability and access to treatment and uh, even to the uh, normal follow-up uh, to treatment which uh, patients have become accustomed to and therefore uh, the whole idea of resilience and strengthening of our health systems is also something that the commission is pursuing in parallel to all of this it's not only a question for cancer but i think covid has has really opened our eyes to the problems of the health systems in keeping a minimum service available in these crisis uh, situations. Um, mention as well, perhaps, um, before I go on, the Digital Europe Initiative, which I think is an important one in modernizing and facilitating the exchange of data uh, digitally. And, and there will also be a specific initiative and funds available there. Uh, important, I think, uh, when you look at things like medical imaging and collection of patient data and how this can be made more um, uh, operational with the use of new digital tools, especially for analysis and, and research purposes. So um, these are some of the elements uh, of the plan. It has uh, the four chapters which I mentioned. There will be 10 flagship initiatives, in other words, big projects within the plan and 32 different actions. And we're at the process at the moment where we're actually discussing how this can be kicked off um, internally and with the member states. Next slide. <clears throat> so uh, in terms of the research and innovation side, we will be establishing this year a, a knowledge center on cancer, which will be taking over, if you like, the work of the European Cancer Registries, which were originally developed by uh, EARC, the International Agency for Cancer Research. 
<clears throat> they have been operated for some years at the European Union level by the Commission's Joint Research Centre. And the idea is to broaden this, this work uh, further um, and to make sure that it's a, uh, a knowledge centre which can facilitate uh, scientific and technical cancer-related initiatives and easier translation as well of research results into concrete benefits for patients through better transfer and quicker transfer of knowledge. The uh, data uh, digital initiative, which I mentioned earlier on, will see um, something which we're planning to launch next year, which is a cancer imaging initiative, uh, taking the benefit of artificial intelligence and supercomputing uh, to make uh, uh, imaging and screening um, much more automized and uh, quality um, quality based. Um, the intention is to be able to secure access and sharing of patient data uh, in the European Union uh, through this European health data space, which will mean electronic health records, will mean um, sorting out the problems which countries have at the moment with data protection, for example. And uh, there will be partnerships launched uh, under the uh, Horizon Europe program in the research area already this year. On the next slide on prevention, I'll just say a few words, uh, updating the cancer code, which I referred to earlier on. The creation of a focus on tobacco, a tobacco free generation. So really looking at young people and how we can stop young people from taking up the habit of smoking. The reduction of alcohol consumption by means of marketing uh, rules, labeling of alcohol products and taxation, of course. And finally, the point about uh, healthy lifestyles, diets, physical activity, and so on. Mentioning there uh, that um, the uh, activities on prevention are really important for, for us because we've seen that the legislation we have on tobacco control, for example, has had a big impact over the last number of years. We want to try and make it even stronger. And the second slide then on uh, prevention where we will be also working with the WHO to improve air quality standards for um, air pollution and air quality. The as uh, zero emission and mobility strategy. So we're trying to link the um, quality of air with the uh, transport policy and the urban policy. In other words, making sure that people have access to uh, sustainable transport with zero emissions to reduce their exposure to, uh, to pollut pollutants in, in, in transport and in their daily lives. The uh, workplace protection, of course, as well. Uh, is a legislative area where the Commission can legislate on reducing the exposure of uh, workers to hazardous substances, carcinogenic substances. And finally, the issue of uh, cancers caused by infections. And here, let me mention the uh, objective of um, um, a strong reduction on gastric and liver cancers related to Heliobacter pylori and hepatitis B and hepatitis C viruses. In other words, trying to move towards elimination of cancers caused by human papilloma viruses by vaccinating at least 90% of the EU target population of girls and significantly increase the vaccination of boys. And we will, of course, be mobilizing member states with financial incentives in order to reach those targets, which are also WHO targets. <clears throat> Going on to the early detection part, uh, on the next slide, we will be updating next year the legal text on council recommendation of screening, developing a new cancer screening scheme uh, with the member states and with scientists, developing quality assurance schemes for colorectal and cervical cancer, which we have already got for breast cancer. So the idea is to extend these. And uh, also uh, looking at new, uh, new uh, sites 
for, for cancer screening, eventually new sites. There's a lot of uh, discussion in the scientific community of where uh, population-based cancer screening could be extended to. On the next slide, uh, I talk about diagnosis and treatment. Uh, and I think uh, Roberto was mentioning earlier on the creation of um, uh, national cancer centers. So the idea is to link these centers together uh, more comprehensively and to finance as well the work which they would do together. Some countries have these centers already, of course, and the idea is really in a spirit of reducing inequalities to try and encourage those countries which don't have specialized cancer centers in place to develop links with others. <clears throat> the uh, cancer diagnostic and treatment for all initiative is really designed to, to link uh, quicker diagnosis and quicker access to treatments. And there will be a specific uh, initiative on that. And uh, we'll also be investing at the European Union level in interspeciality training programs. We know that the Workforce is going to be one of the biggest problems in our health systems in coming years. It's already a problem in some member states, but it's going to get worse. And therefore, I think uh, interspeciality training programs might be one way that the European Union could help in increasing the capacity of our systems. There will be new reference networks. So you know about the European reference networks, which we have mostly for uh, rare diseases, but also including rare cancers and these will be extended. Uh, we hope that the Council and Parliament will agree on a regime for assessing new medicinal products. It's called the so-called health technology assessment process, where we would not have 27 countries deciding differently on the value of new products and whether they should be reimbursed or not, but a common approach. So we have a common approach already for authorization in medicines, but we need a common approach, we think, to how those medicines are then introduced into the health system. And of course, then there's all the issues around radionuclear medicine. You know, we have a lot of problems in Europe about the availability and stability of the supply chain for our medicines, and in particular for uh, radioisotopes. And, and this is only one side of the problem. The other side of the problem is the availability of um, uh, radionuclear medicine of sufficient quality across the European Union. And that's why we will be working with our colleagues who are responsible for Eurotom to develop specific initiatives on the supply chain for radioisotopes and radiopharmaceuticals and for training of radiologists and staff working in that field. And also perhaps with the medical imaging industry. Next slide is continuing on diagnostic uh, initiatives and treatment, where there will be a partnership on personalized medicine, which clearly has a huge role to make in, in, uh, in cancer treatment. Personalized prevention as well is one of the ideas we're looking at, depending on your risk uh, profile. If instead of giving messages to the whole population, we can target our, our prevention messages more specifically to people who are at higher risk. Genomics, of course, for public health. Uh, high performance computing, I mentioned earlier on, to test existing molecules and new drug combinations. This is something we're doing uh, in, in respect of COVID treatments at the moment um, to assist research on personalized cancer treatments. And um, again, using AI, artificial intelligence for improvements in cancer diagnostics and treatment. Let me say a few words on quality of life on the next slide and uh, for patients, survivors and carers. And uh, we do uh, try to uh, imagine some initiatives in this area. We know that the number of cancer survivors is increasing, it's great news. But of course, it's also bringing challenges to the people themselves because you take the case of a pediatric cancer, somebody will have on their medical file for the rest of their lives, this cancer diagnosis. And this causes all sorts of problems for, particularly in the financial sector, financial insurance sector. So this is one thing we're anxious to look at because even if your health is there, 
maybe you can't buy a house, maybe you can't get a loan for a car. Uh, you know, it has all sorts of implications on people's lives. So we really want to see what we can do in terms of better access for cancer survivors to financial services uh, and better uh, protection for people who uh, help and care for family members or loved ones who have cancer. In other words, the caring, the carers community. And we will be trying to identify, particularly with the patient groups, where the needs are and what the European input could be there. On the next slide, probably the most important slide of all, probably the most important slide of all, it's about reducing inequalities. Because if it's one thing that any of you could probably tell me, it's the huge inequalities across Europe. And this is not normal. We have an internal market. We have a common currency. Uh, we have all sorts of things which we do together. And we assume you know, the quality of the air, the quality of the water, the quality of our products, the quality of our pharmaceuticals. All of this is supposed to be standardized. And yet, when it comes to the most important thing in people's lives, their health, then you find, even in within the same city, you find years of difference of life expectancy. Now, this is completely and totally unacceptable. And I think if I had to pick out one slide to show to you, this would be the one I would show you. And really what we want to do here is to try and create a vision of where these inequalities are and use that to drive our actions and drive our, um, our investments. And I would really ask uh, DICE and other patient groups to come in with us on this because you would be the ones who can give us the reality check on the ground. You can tell us what's happening on the ground in your member state, which are the patient groups who are left out, where are the gaps. We get a completely different picture, by the way, from our member states, because they will be looking at a different set of, of indicators, you know? So I think it's really important that the uh, patient groups, the health professionals as well, give us the reality check on all of this. And then that will be, one way that we can steer the car and also decide where we need to act and where the investments need to be made. If everybody's doing fine, then we leave that particular area alone, but I doubt we'll have many of those particular areas. I think we'll find there'll be huge differences across the European Union. And that's one of our key ambitions with this plan is to try and reduce these differences between the member states. And, um, I think the last point I'd like to make maybe, uh, I mean, there's a couple of other slides, but I'm running over time and I don't want to, um, uh, I don't want to take time from other uh, colleagues and also for the discussion, but I mentioned childhood cancers. That's on the next slide where I think the whole uh, aspect of working with uh, health professionals, working with the pharmaceutical industry, working with health systems, to try and reduce the impact of ch children's cancer is really important. Uh, there will be uh, new initiatives on pediatric cancer. And we will be trying to reduce the uh, number of uh, children who will be losing their lives, about 2,000 patients a year at the moment, to uh, the lowest level possible. So we will be having a specific focus on, on that. And finally, on the next slide, the European Commission Initiative on Colorectal Cancer is an initiative aimed to improve quality, to reduce inequalities in access by, uh, for example, reducing, producing guidelines on prevention, screening, and diagnosis, and a quality assurance scheme, which, which I talked about earlier on. And this will be launched uh, already um, in March of this year. It will be a single uh, scientific panel that will be guiding this work. And uh, we hope that the uh, approach that we're taking has been consulted with the patient and health uh, professionals community. And we hope that this will be something that you can buy into and support. I've come to the, the end of my slides. I've probably gone over my time, but thank you again for giving me the opportunity to present this major commission initiative, which I hope will be of some use to your work in digestive cancers in the coming years. Thank you.